Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Budget Investing. So today I'm going to go over how rising interest rates are going to affect the market and what I'm doing to protect myself during this time to ensure that I'm still moving forward in the long term to retire um, and be financially independent. So let's dive into it. So if you're anything like me, you've probably seen this all over the place on every different news channel and everywhere in the investing world, but the Fed is raising its interest rates for the first time since 2018, and they are now starting talking about doing it again and again and looking at making larger and larger increases to try to slow down that inflation so that people like you and me are able to still buy all of the necessities that we need and hopefully be able to save a little bit at the end of the month towards our retirement. Now, we kind of need to know what this actually means for us as the investor and to really understand that we need to look at the whole market or everyone that is participating in it. And as you can see that the debt levels in all of the USA has just been continuously rising year after year. And of course, since uh, the pandemic has really hit, there's been this huge boom that you see and it's come back down a little bit since the uh, economy's opened back up but things are not looking great. We're really sitting at those all-time high levels of debt and with an in increasing interest rate, how's that going to affect us? So historically, interest rates have, of course, always adjusted depending on the needs in the market and what the government is trying to accomplish. If we really zoom into the last 20 years or so, you can see that the government has drastically cut its interest rates to try to spur economic growth and continue things moving forward. They did increase things obviously right before the pandemic to an extent to try and slow it down and prevent anything getting too out of control. Um, but of course the last two years or so it's been rock bottom and we're starting to see it jump back up. So this really in impacts people like you and me when we're taking out loans or have credit card debt as those rates are also going to increase. Now when we look at this from a bigger standpoint and we look at companies specifically, as you can see on my sh screen here, this is Apple's uh, liabilities and their long-term and short-term borrowings. If their interest rates go up even by a half a percent, say on their long-term debt um, from this $11 billion and it goes up another half percent versus what they're paying now, now all of a sudden that's really going to start eating into Apple's profits. Specifically, it's going to affect their revenue per share, and they've hit all-time highs of just under $23 per share, but if now we're taking out 5% of that, or whatever that interest increase for Apple ends up being, and it drops back down to 20 or 15 like it was in September of 2020, or whatever ends up being, now their stock price is going to drop. Aside from just stock prices going down because they have more debt and they're not able to be as profitable, it also opens up opportunities for things like bonds and treasuries. As you can see, historically, their interest rate that they've paid back has been decreasing. But if we continue on this trend of this drastic and rapid increase, uh, we are going to be way more likely to invest into things like bonds as that guaranteed amount of money of three and a half, four, five, six percent becomes available, and you're going to be less likely to jump into something that's speculative of maybe giving you seven or eight percent when you could play it safe and get that guaranteed four or five percent. Now, that's obviously not going to be for everyone, but for a lot of people, that is a great opportunity for them, and they don't want to take those risks. Now, this is where things get a little confusing because when we go to look at the historical data of the S&P 500 over the last 12 rake heights going back to the 1950s, you can see that on average it's increased, not gone down, and it's increased by 9.4%, which is honestly a fantastic return. So what is actually going on with this and why, why is it going up when we just said how it's actually supposed to be going down? The first reason why we aren't actually seeing the market go down um, is when you look at the historical data of just recently, we'll use Apple as our example, you can see back in February when the rate increases were starting to be talked about, the market really tanked down. And it went down, you know, 14, 15%. And then since that point, it's come back up. And of course, yes, there's a little bit more in there, but the market has already started to price in these rate changes on top of the fact that the market has already priced in the interest rate heights you know here's a few others you know supply and demand 
company related fa factors, investor sentiment, politics, current events, natural calamities, exchange rates, and these lists are definitely not exhaustive and there's a million different reasons why. Now an interest rate increase is just one factor as to why the stock market could go up or could go down. So how am I protecting myself during these interest rate hikes and setting myself up to succeed? Simple, I'm sticking with my very basic investing strategy. Uh, number one, I have to understand how a company makes money. Two, the market cap needs to be a minimum of two billion. Three, the revenue is increasing. Four, it pays a dividend. Five, it has dividend growth, which is 10% or greater annually. Six, the debt levels are under control and or steady and decreasing. Seven, I will only hold the maximum of 30 stocks as I'm not able to keep up with anything more than that. And eight, it needs to be outperforming its industry comparables. This for me is a really simple list. It's definitely not super in depth, but it's simple enough that I'm able to follow it with ease. And I come back to it whenever I'm having doubts or questions to see if a company truly does fit within my investing strategy and if I should even be holding it. So those are my thoughts on the interest rate heights that are coming through and how I feel they're going to impact the stock market in the short and long term, as I really do feel that things are going to continue moving upwards. And that's just how I'm protecting myself during this time, as I don't think there's anything to worry about. I don't need to make any drastic changes. It's going to be slow and steady, continue to buy the high quality stocks that I already believe in. And hopefully you can walk away from this with that same level of conviction. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.